In this video, I'm going to show you the relative date filtering feature in Power BI. And we're also going to compare and contrast it with the offset technique we have seen in the ultimate calendar. Now you can find the link to the complete ultimate calendar playlist up above or down below in the details. Now let's go on and look at relative date filtering. If it is your first time visiting my channel, then don't forget to subscribe. That way you will know whenever I upload new videos or go live to answer your questions. Now we have covered a lot of topics in our ultimate calendar table and this is just one more in that series. So let's just dive in. So here is our Power BI desktop window and here is our date slicer. So all I did was grab a date type field and dropped it in my Power BI desktop uh, canvas and changed it to a slicer which is right here. Now by default, you would probably get this slicer. Now this is a between slicer. But if you click on this arrow, you would notice that there are many other choices in there. And the one that we're interested in today is the relative slicer. So let me activate that and you will see how it changes. So now you see it has these three fields last, uh, which one you can select this last or next let me just select this and this would let you select you know kind of this month this calendar and so forth uh, but i'm going to focus on last because that's the closest to how we have been using offsets so far so last first of all if you select click on the select button you will notice that really there are two sets of options one which say calendar table and another which do not say calendar so sorry I, I said calendar table uh, one which says calendar in the text and the other which does not say calendar uh, let's look at the one which does not say calendar so this one is relative to the current date and if you notice today here we go I brought on the clock so you can see it's Monday October 23rd 7 27 p.m. right now and if I were to select last let's say last month now, this is kind of odd. Uh, today is October 23rd, so I didn't expect to see October 24th in here. I'm not sure if it's uh, based on the GMT time or something else, but uh, you get the idea. So I can say last one month, and this gives me kind of like 30 days, it seems like, 925, September 25 to October 24. I can say last one year, and again, it's based on the current date. So it takes the current date and it goes back one year. This is not of that much interest to me in the scenarios that I have worked with my clients and students. This doesn't usually come up that much. The one that is typical and can be compared easily with the month offset or offset approach we've used is the calendar options. So that is this one, this one, this one. So from now on, I'm just going to focus on that. So this one, uh, let's try uh, last calendar year. So this one, you can see it selects uh, uh, the 2016 calendar year. Let's focus on months. And here, instead of one, I can say three months. And you can see it selects uh, July, August, and September, the complete months. Now this, if you notice, this is exactly similar to our offset approach where we would have said, uh, you know, select minus one, minus two, and minus three. Now that you have seen the two approaches, one, the built-in uh, uh, relative date filtering in Power BI, and if you have, of course, seen the offset approach in a prior video, I wanted to compare and contrast the two. Now. Uh, you're going to realize that uh, you still need the offset t uh, offset uh, technique. I'm going to lay out three reasons. And number three is really big in my mind. So let's start with number one, which is measures can use offset. Hey, and measures are the magic for BI, right? So let's take a look at that. So here we have a quarterly sales. And what we would like to do is to write a measure which compares the sales in this quarter with the sales in the previous quarter. So essentially, you know, kind of brings this in in a new measure. Now, how would we write it? Now, of course, we have the current quarter offset in here. So I'm going to bring that in and you can see what that looks like. So notice here that to calculate to say that, hey, okay, I need to bring in the last quarter's sales numbers over here. I can easily go by the quarter offset. So I can say that here the quarter offset is nine. Just find out the the sales for quarter offset minus nine. So just prior month, right? So again, maybe it's easier to look at the current month. So saying, hey, the current month is zero. If I find out the sales 
for where the quarter offset is minus one, that represents the prior quarter, right? Because that's the way the offset technique has worked. Zero represents the current quarter and minus one, minus two, minus three represents the prior quarters. So here I've written, written the measure just to save us some time. So I'm just, just gonna bring it in and you can see how it works. So sales previous quarter. And there you go, you can see that it is working. It's, it's bringing in the sales from prior quarter. And of course, at this point, we can write comparison measures. We can say delta, this minus this as a percentage, whatever we want to do. And if you look at the measure, it's utilizing that current quarter offset. Just as we had laid out, it goes to this one, figures out the max offset, or not, not the max, but uses the max function to determine the qu quarter offset that's currently active, and then just does minus one to pop over to the pr previous quarter. So that's how we're calculating. This is just one example. If you look at the calendar table, we have, of course, the current fiscal year offset, month offset, quarter offset, week offset, year offset, a lot of these offsets, and uh, future date and some other columns as well. So you can use these in your measures to simplify your calculations quite a bit. So that, that was just one example to kind of show that scenario. Now let's go to number two you have a lot more control with offsets. So let's go back and look into that. And I'll just show you a few examples. So a lot more control, a lot more flexibility. The first one is fiscal year. So fiscal year, uh, obviously this doesn't have, even though it has the calendar year option, does not have fiscal year. And I think it would be pretty hard for Power BI team to build that in because in my experience, there are a lot of different fiscal years in effect. Sometimes it starts in February, sometimes it starts in July. I've heard of a government organization where it starts in October, not to mention the 445 calendars. But doesn't matter which kind of calendar you're using, you can write your own offset function, which would let you do uh, things like this, where you can say, hey, this report is always going to show the prior complete fiscal year. So now I say minus one, it goes to FY17 based on my fiscal year definition, which goes from July to June. And, you know, same way I can say, hey, uh, you know, show me two years prior or show me both minus one, minus two, and that shows me that fiscal year. So, you know, just uh, just some a little bit of flexibility. When you're defining offset, you have complete control, complete and absolute control over how you use them, how you define them. Uh, just to show a little bit more, the one thing that I was trying to do, and this has been a real scenario, which I needed to do for my clients, was to show kind of the the past, you know, not just the, the prior months. Let me try that again. So control click but show a few future months as well. And this graph isn't that great, but the idea here was to show actual sales and, uh, and, and maybe some forecast for future months. So not only are we selecting uh, months in the past, but months in the future as well. And right now, I, I wasn't able to figure out uh, an approach, a way to do it using the relative date filtering in Power BI. Now this might change, but again, it underscores the point that when you're controlling it yourself, you have complete flexibility and complete control. So now let's go to reason number three, and I think this one is big, this one is huge. Now, so the reason number three is that you can use offsets in other visualizations tools besides Power BI. And my friends, you have to remember that, that that's super powerful because the strength of Power BI is, is comes from this author, publish, consume model, where you sure you can author your reports in Power BI desktop and you can publish it on powerbi.com or on-prem options, but then the flexibility that comes from being able to connect any visualization tool you want. You can connect Excel, Power BI, heck, if you care, you can connect Tableau to your Power BI model. So yeah, just use the visualization tool of your choice and that gives you so much power because then you can use Excel for what Excel is great for. It's a terrific visualization tool once you have defined a clean model and established that as a single source of truth. So here I have uh, our, our offset technique and you know just some random pivot tables. But again, the idea is you can use that inside Excel and you can say, hey, do not show me the future date. So you notice how the graph is, uh, you know, uh, respecting the offset. So you can build a report and connect it to multiple sheets and so forth. And you know, all the Excel tricks that we use, right? So I sometimes hide my slicers 
on a, a separate sheet and hide the sheet. But that, that way you can create an Excel report which always shows you the current year or current fiscal year or past six months, whatever you want, whatever the offsets let you do. And that way you can kind of set it and forget it. It's always going to be the current fiscal year. So you've seen both approaches, the built-in Power BI relative date filtering, and you've of course seen the offset approach. And really the best part is you do not have to choose. You use one where that makes sense, where it's easy and convenient, and use other where that makes sense. And that's what I love about Power BI. There's not, there isn't always a single way to do it. It gives you the control and flexibility to use it the way you like it. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.